Welcome to Get Ready. I'm Greg Martin. Thank you for watching and listening as we get ready for these last days. Eh, well, we should be ready because <laughs> we're in the last days. Uh, but I'm excited to share the events going on in our world that parallel what Jesus and the prophets said thousands of years ago would happen in our day. We are truly living in biblical times. Today I want to talk about earthquakes in various places. Um, and uh, let's continue our text out of Matthew chapter 24, uh, what Jesus was saying. And he's, uh, he uh, was given signs. You'll recognize that I'm about to come when you see these things happening. So Matthew 24 and verse 7, it says, For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famine, pestilence. Uh, we talked about those in previous episodes, but here's where we're going to land today. Uh, pestilence and earthquakes in various places. Well, there certainly have been an uptick of earthquakes over the past several years, and uh, there's a lot of record of that. It's not something that's obscure. Uh, anyone can go on to Google or the uh, USGS and look at the um, uh, severity, the frequency of earthquakes that have been happening around the world. And there certainly has been an uh, uptick. Uh, I was looking at a graph, a 100-year graph of earthquakes. And uh, it, man, it just scales up to our current day of the frequency of earthquakes that have been happening. Um, even just a few days ago, a major earthquake in Afghanistan, uh, killing over 1,000 people, 1,500 injured uh, saw pictures where they were carving out mass graves to bury the dead. And, you know, that just happened. Um, just going back uh, t uh, last year, Haiti had an earthquake, earthquake killing uh, t over 2,200 people. Uh, in the NGNC in 2020, 119. Albania had an earthquake. Uh, big one. Let me go to a big one that happened. I'm just looking here. Nepal in 20. Uh, 15, there was almost 9,000 people died in a, in a massive earthquake. Just so much destruction. Uh, Japan had an earthquake in 2011. 20,000 people died. Uh, again, Haiti in 2010, 160,000 people died. And then a big one that um, you know, uh, we remember, it's, it's 18 years ago, but in the Indian Ocean that created the tsunami, uh, 227,000 people died in that massive earthquake. So Jesus said earthquakes in the plural form that there would be earthquakes and in various places. Uh, so this would be a global phenomenon. Jesus was telling his disciples uh, there will be earthquakes all over the world. And Jesus was warning us uh, that in a short amount of time, right before he comes, there would be a, a frequency and intensity of earthquakes happening around the earth. And the earth itself is tired of sin, and it's longing for Jesus to return. And so that's part of the, the problem that's going on with the earth today, that it's, it's just tired of sin. The earth, God's creation, is tired of sin. And, and uh, how many believers out there can go amen to that? Well, the earth is feeling it and uh, is, is literally saying, Jesus, come, come quickly. And so the United States uh, Geological Survey estimates that there are several million earthquakes that happen each year around the world. Million. Now, most of those happen in rural areas or they're not, they don't register above a four on the Richter scale to be of any significance, but lots of earthquakes. But they do expect 16 major earthquakes every year on average over the last several years. They just kind of configured an average. And so they expect uh, 15 earthquakes to be in the seven point uh, between 7 and 8 on the Richter scale, and they expect at least one mega earthquake, uh, 8.0 or greater, uh, each year. Uh, I mean, that's, I did just expect that. Those are some big earthquakes. 7.0 is a massive earthquake. 8.0? Hello, big time earthquake. Luke chapter 21, verse 11, 
kind of parallels Matthew's account. And it says, and there will be great earthquakes in various places and famines, pestilence, and fearful sights, blah, blah, blah. Jesus said great earthquakes. Um, So this isn't mild things, but he's saying right before I come, there will be big, significant earthquakes in quantity and severity. Romans chapter 8, 21 says, For we know that the whole creation groans and labor with birth pains together until he comes. So, uh, like I was saying, the earth is groaning, and uh, it's, it's groaning as um, we know how prophecy ends up, that there's a new world order coming. Global leaders are talking about it and pushing a global agenda. And as believers, we know we're, that there's a big shift uh, coming not too far from now uh, with geopolitical leaders, one world government, one world currencies, and uh, kind of a global r- religious system. And uh, so it also says in Luke that there would uh, not only be earthquakes in various places, places, but also fearful sights. You know, uh, could be referring to catastrophic disasters that have happened uh, or will happen, such as earthquakes or tsunamis, um, but but big things. The last time, for instance, uh, the United States president demanded Israel to give up land for peace, um, the United States just, uh, I think the next day, had Hurricane Katrina come in. And uh, from what I understand, there's still parts of Louisiana that have still not recovered from Hurricane Katrina. So big stuff. And so now, uh, warning, hello, uh, next month, uh, our, our president is going to be going to Israel and he's going to be putting demand, demand on Israel that they give up Jerusalem to the Palestinians and uh, displace over 600,000 Israeli citizens. So, uh, yeah, buckle up because it could be a rough ride for the United States because there's a promise that anyone who blesses Israel will be blessed and anyone who curses Israel will be cursed. So uh, that's not a good thing for our president to be going and doing. So it'll be interesting to see what happens next month, right? So just something to think about. But not to mention just earthquakes and uh, tsunamis and stuff, but fearful sights. You know, it's, it's been interesting. Uh, NASA has been recording some near misses of meteorites uh, almost hitting the Earth. There's a big one that's expected to... They're not sure it, uh, whether it's going to hit Earth or not here in uh, about five or six more years out. But they see it coming, but the trajectory hasn't been 100% dialed in. But uh, some are worried. Um, they're even uh, planning, there's some plans, I guess, to, to launch rockets up there, attach this thing. It's, it's, it's like movie type stuff where they're going to put jets on this thing to tr- have it miss the earth or something. But, you know, the Bible talks about fearful things. Uh, when the tribulation begins, one of the seals that will be opened uh, is called wormwood. Wormwood is a meteor, many theologians believe, that will hit the earth and will contaminate one-third of the drinking water and kill a lot of people. So, uh, yeah, wow. So, bad things. There's also fearful sights. Uh, as of late, people have been hearing of solar flares, have been concerning and solar flares are have the ability to shut down power grids electronics and communication system satellite stuff so a lot of things could happen also uh, fearful sites could be um, technology that we have in our day and age uh, nuclear warfare is is something that is kind of a clear and present danger to a lot of people right now and i remember as a kid we used to have these nuclear drills due to the Cold War and uh, you know, tell all the kids, get under your desk, you know, prepare for a war. I don't know what getting under a desk could possibly do to save our little lives. But nonetheless, we uh, had these little bombing drills in case the Russians invaded, you know, our little town and whatever. But anyway, but today 
you know, that was just a Cold War of just in case the Russians did something. But today, uh, the Cold War's ended, but man, there's been an escalating talk of threats of nuclear warfare, not only from the Russians, Chinese, North Korea, and many other nations that have nuclear capabilities. And this hasn't been a real threat since uh, World War II. It's the only time a nuclear bomb has been been dropped. But there's been, uh, we've been uh, free from that, but here we are. And uh, there's talk of world leaders that are kind of crazy. Um, you know, speaking of that, I just want to remind you of just some fearful sights. Um, Damascus uh, is uh, an interesting thing to be keeping your eye on. Isaiah 17, 1 says, the burden against Damascus, behold, Damascus will cease from being a city and it will be a ruinous heap. Uh, that's yet to be fulfilled. Jeremiah 49, 26, also talking about Damascus, says, Therefore her young men shall fall in the streets, and all men of war shall be cut off in that day, says the Lord of hosts. Uh, so this is a horrific disaster that's yet to be uh, fulfilled. And uh, Iran keeps pumping missiles and military hardware into Damascus. Just a couple weeks ago, Israel bombed. Uh, Damascus International Airport with multiple missiles and disrupted the runway and the tower. And I, actually today, I think, uh, they reopened Damascus International Airport for the first time since all that bombing. But Israel's trying to protect itself because uh, all this military hardware coming in that is uh, war material aimed at Israel. So with Iran uh, on the verge of uh, launching a nuclear missile in Iran that makes no bones about it. That's what they want to do. They want to destroy Israel 100%. So with all that, Israel's got to protect itself. So we'll see. Maybe there'll be a nuclear bomb transferred to Damascus, and uh, that could be one of the sites and fulfilling this biblical prosopy, prophecy. But anyway, these signs of the Bible are accurate about the times we live in. Um, we are here for such a time as this, and sometimes it can be uh, a thing that we can be concerned, you know, what should I do and how should I prepare? I'm telling you, the best way to prepare is give your life to Jesus Christ, repent of your sins, walk with Him, be in church, be in fellowship with believers, live a clean and holy life, listen to the Holy Spirit, the guide on the inside of what you should do, and be encouraged. I mean, I say these things, and maybe it you know, creeps up fear, but I'm telling you, live for God. Live in peace, the God of peace who comforts and guards our hearts and our minds. But it's like I, say, I always say, man, whether Jesus comes soon or it's his, his uh, return is delayed, live to be ready because it could happen anytime. God bless. God bless.